you never know what God's going to lead in your life. That is so fake. That is the <laughs> fakest picture I've ever seen in my whole entire life. That is so fake. It could be filtered. Maybe she has a really good camera. This really physically fit old dude Ben is in an online relationship with this girl named Mahogany, who is obviously a catfish. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> Y'all already know I had to insert that Anchorman clip. I'll be honest, that's the only other time I've heard the name Mahogany. And if you hear the name Mahogany and you're talking to someone with that name, they're probably a catfish. Like the name is a dead giveaway that this is probably not a real person. First impression of Ben, he's the perfect combination of Steven and David Murphy from 90 Day Fiance. Surprise, surprise, Ben is from Michigan where all the NPCs are from this season. Right away, the audience learns that Ben is desperate to find love because he grew up in a cult. And instead of working out a lot of the immense issues he has, as in therapy, he decides to hit the gym instead because my man's looking swole. When we first meet Ben, he is quite literally flexing on us. He's showing us that the beach is that way. Ben describes himself as optimistic, hardworking, and he takes care of his body. Ben recently got into fitness modeling because a coworker told him that he could earn $400 for one hour of work. When I first hear this, I'm like, oh my God, $400 for one hour of work? That is an insane hourly wage to stand there and flex your abs while people take photos of you. I honestly wish there was a way to fact check that. It just seems like an outrageous wage to be paid. I I didn't know that you make that much money in modeling. Ben says even though the money's good, sometimes the job weighs on him because growing up, he was told that our bodies are sinful. Like I already mentioned, this dude grew up in a really weird Baptist cult. It's kind of like the ones where if you have a gay kid, they send him to gay conversion therapy. Like those kind of ones. And by the way, those conversion camps are still out there and they need to be destroyed. Ben shows us a picture of back in the glory days when he was a kid with his family in the cult and they do that Christmas photo. You know those white people Christmas photos? That's what this seems like to me. Young ben Benjamin also quite literally looks like the kid from Stuart Little. As we dive deeper into this guy's childhood, we learn that he wasn't allowed to go to the movies, nor was he allowed to talk to anyone not belonging to his church. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I'd be out of there the minute some member of Beater Church told me I couldn't see movies. Like, are you serious? I'd probably bug on him and have a vision like, oh, God, I'm getting a message from Archangel Gabriel. He says, I can see Spider-Man. Ben's an interesting case though, because after he tells us about his negative upbringing with the church, he informs us that he became a pastor. I definitely wanted to go to heaven, so I decided to be a pastor. <laughs> and I married my church children's ministry partner. Yeah, it's weird, I'm trying to look it up, but there's nowhere in the Bible that says you have to become a pastor in order to get into heaven. So from this and Ben's manner of speaking about the church, I can tell that he feels like he has spent his entire life living according to their narrative and not to his own. With his fellow minister wife, her and Ben had four children and they tried to make their marriage work despite the problems because in their faith, they say uh, if they didn't make it work, they would go to hell. TLC's outdone themselves this season. Whoever did the casting for this season deserves a raise. We have a lot to digest. I have a lot of experience with organized religion, so let's just get into it. Benny boy, I'm sorry that you grew up in a cult, but you're gullible as and the way that you're talking about your faith and your upbringing, it seems like you have a lot of regrets, but have you accepted your role that you played in your life? You know, cause you're doing a lot of things where you're blaming everything on the church. And to me, it feels like you haven't really come to terms with the fact that you did that. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. I just feel like Ben should have realized that he was in a cult 40 years ago. It's hard to feel bad for the lack of common sense. Ben says seven years ago, him and his wife left the church and tried to save their marriage, but by then the damage was done. When Ben talks about his marriage, to his previous partner. He says that it was 24 years of neglect. My first marriage uh, was a very artificial construct. Wow! What I think from the situation is that she reminds him of the past version of himself and he's ashamed of the person that he used to be. Most people are gonna say that I am going through a midlife crisis. Uh, but I swear that's not true. My advice to Ben is to really sit and think about this for a second. Now you're chasing that bachelor lifestyle and you're chasing these young girls on the internet because you didn't get to experience that when you were younger because of the limitations that you placed on yourself. Forget the church, okay? You stayed in the church. You thrived in the church. You followed every single guideline that they wanted you to follow. You did that. They didn't do that. They didn't hold a gun to your head. They didn't make you do that. You did that. And you're not gonna grow and progress in your life until you you come to terms with that and forgive yourself for that. Also be real about it. I don't like the way he's talking about his ex-wife. You know, she left behind her support system. Even though that was a cult, that was still all that these people knew. That was their support system. So I get it's incredibly hard to walk away from that. But imagine walking away from that with your partner and then them saying it was 24 years of neglect, the marriage is over. And then he's broadcasting his love adventures, chasing these young, attractive catfish girls on one of the most watched TV shows in America. And he's playing 
placing the blame on her for the neglect. I just pray your ex-wife has enough forgiveness in her heart to stand by your side when this all crashes and burns on your face because it's not gonna end well, bro. Ben says after he split with his wife, he was going through a really hard time and he was really struggling, but he always held on to his faith. So we got on a bunch of dating sites because he was lonely. People like Ben make me laugh because he brings God into everything. You know, he makes it seem like, oh yeah, God wants you to go chase all that international pussy. He was leading you towards the dating sites because you were lonely. No, dude, you were lonely. So you logged on and got onto dating sites because you want to hook up with girls. Just say that. Don't try to bring God into it and make it seem like it's the divine truth that God wants this lifestyle for you. He wants you to be a bachelor. Don't make it what it isn't. Because of my religious background, I was very inexperienced. I didn't understand how to navigate that world. Let's do some math real quick. 52 years old, just got a motorcycle, chasing 24 year old puss. Sounds to me like he's on a noble quest to find the clitoris. My boy Ben's been working hard to get that DILF body. So he throws up a bunch of pictures of himself on IG. And apparently he noticed that one of his followers was super attractive. So he sent her a wave emoji. So Ben starts talking to his dream girl on Instagram. And it's becoming more apparent to me that this guy is a lost cause. Someone needs to take his phone away, maybe one of his children because their conversation is absolute cancer. I'm gonna read it for you right now. Hi, comma, nice to meet you. I think you also have nice photos. Buddy boy, what 24 year old girl texts like this? And his response, hope you have a good night from America, blessings. I didn't realize that you're eating fucking supper. Blessings? Who ends a text message with blessings? Are my teeth yellow? I need to bleach my teeth. Then introduces us to his girlfriend he hasn't met in real life yet named Mahogany and reveals that she's from Peru. I've been all around Latin America. I've never once in my life met someone or heard of someone named Mahogany in Latin America. This girl's looks and the text messages do not match my guy. I think you're on the wrong show. You should be on Catfish, not 90 Day. Ben goes on to gas up whatever dude he's talking to that is pretending to be this girl Mahogany. He says that her beauty is only matched by her wisdom and then shows more text threats between them. Oh, fuck you. Not the typical. I always felt that my purpose in life was to help people. And and then his response, you have a very kind and sweet heart, Mahogany. My purpose in life was to help people. That's funny because later in the episode, it's revealed when this guy is talking to his friends that this girl asked him for a thousand dollar loan. And that's how he said it. I gave her a thousand dollar loan. But she asked for a loan, which is different. A loan is money. She, she asked you for a loan. So did you give it to her? Yeah, I did. No, dude, you're getting scammed by someone that's pretending to be a girl. It's not a loan if you're never gonna get the money back. I can't believe people are still giving money to someone they met online that they haven't video chatted with. Like, it's year 2022. She just doesn't like video chatting, and I understand that. But I insisted that she send me, like, a video. Wait, this dude doesn't realize it's sus. Mahogany sends him a pre-recorded video and won't FaceTime him. Now I'm 100% certain this dude is talking to Mahogany's boyfriend. Ben's female friend seems like the only normal person here. To make matters worse, Ben openly admits to getting catfished before by a guy in Nigeria pretending to be a girl. But I know that's not the case with Mahogany because we just keep connecting every single day deeper and deeper and you can't fake that. Guys, comment below your Venmos. Maybe Ben watches these dumb videos I put out on my channel. Shoot or shoot, pew, pew. Did you know that if you text someone pew pew, it shoots laser beams? I bet Ben didn't know that. Ben goes on to say, despite the vast age difference, he feels like this girl is his soulmate. And to make it even funnier, every picture they show of this girl, it looks like it's a different girl. Sign 312, you're getting scammed. The marvels of science. I've been playing so much Heimerdinger on League recently. As soon as I talk about Jesus is my savior and I'm not interested in a sexual relationship until after marriage, uh, that usually is something that will turn them off. Yo, Benny boy, you can always slide into Girl Defines DMs. Those girls stay searching for godly men. This girl in Peru sounds too good to be true. See what I did there? I'm like Dr. Seuss. Let's list the facts. Her name's Mahogany, and also she's not interested in any sexual intercourse with you. Hmm, wonder why. And for me to talk freely to Mahogany about those things and for her to agree was just very unusual. She has a love for the Lord, as do I. <laughs> She has a love for the Lord, as do I, with a picture of her looking promiscuous as fuck in a bra. Yeah, dude. 
For sure. You did it. For sure she's cool with not getting piped. A hundred percent she wants to wait until marriage. This is a dude. I can't even get mad about it because this is some shit I would do. If you guys missed my previous video, I talked about trolling a bunch of people in World of Warcraft, being a female character and getting gold from a bunch of sins. I would a hundred percent do this. If I wasn't making YouTube videos, I would have probably done some shady shit like this. So you know what? I can't get mad at the dude that is trolling the fuck out of Ben. She has a love for the Lord, as do I. She has a deep love for Jesus. I'm willing to bet she has a deep love for cock and butter does. She has known Jesus for years and has given us so much to talk about. The audacity of this man to sit here and tell us that this girl has known Jesus for years. You have not even met her yet. You don't even know if this girl's real. Ben goes on to laugh and say it's the little things, like trying to tell me what kind of facial gesture she's making while she's saying these words to me. It's just the sweetest. Ben goes on to show us more text threads with him and this girl with the made up name, which is actually great. It just gives us more shit to joke about. He says things to this girl that he hasn't met yet, like, I love you with all that I am, my beloved mahogany. And then she responds, I want to kiss you now. I need your hugs. I want you to know what it is to be loved. I will show you every day being together, my love. I love Pakistan. I would die for Pakistan. Big guy, this dude's getting trolled so hard. Also, when he was on the motorcycle, he said something like, people probably think I'm going through a midlife crisis because I have a motorcycle, but I'm not. That's exactly something someone going through a midlife crisis would say. The first stage, denial. I, I want to marry this girl. I do. You love her? Yes. You're already there. I'm already there. Or from three I months felt. of texting. Yes. Yes. Guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. I can't wait to make updates about this couple. The whole situation seems so funny to me. Uh, guys, comment below, subscribe, listen, listen, follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.